Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to show and tell number 217, I believe. I hope you guys have had a wonderful, fantastic week. Thank you so much for bearing with the random unboxings of the last couple videos. I was really, really excited with what I had gotten from the Mary Maxim, especially since I did not get any of the yarn. There were so many pretty yarns. I did double check the cotton collage that I was using to make the twisted stitches, right? Yarn twisters. The yarn store is yarn twisters. The yarn twisters, sisterhood of the traveling shirt. Yes. Uh, that was on sale at the Mary Maxim sale for $2.99 for 50 grams. So if you had been interested, that would be a good stopping point to go get it. Uh, if not, I do have an affiliate link with Premiere in the description box down below. So if you just want to go to the Premiere website and pick some up, that's fine too. One I'm affiliated with, one I am not. Um, I did go ahead and put everything into the paper crafting area for the stickers and everything from new craft day, right? I keep get I keep saying their name backwards. So I'm really hoping I said it right in the video because now I'm not sure I said it right in the video, but I know I typed it right based on the website. <laughs> Yo, my brain's just not having it with me. Mm -mm. So I've gotten a lot done this week. I did not touch my shell shell tank top sweater thingy thing, but I did do some things. I have two finished objects. One is blocked. One I just finished this morning. And there's a chance I'll have one more project done before the end of the month. So next week or starting with next week, we're going to start having like some quarter one updatey type things going on. Unfortunately, as far as like visible change in the yarn wall, there's been none. So I'm not really going to talk about, I'm not going to do an update on the project stash down. Um, once again, stash down, not de-stash. I like what I have. I want to use what I have. I just have too much and need to be using it. Uh, but we will have a quarterly goals update. We will have a UFOs update as well as, depending on how long I talk and the update where I got on the UFOs I pulled for quarter one, we will also have a video picking projects to kind of spend time focusing on as far as UFOs go in quarter two. That may be one video, that might be two videos. We also have... The Yarnable and ALCs are getting ready to ship. I think I just got notification that the ALC has shipped. So that's happening. By the way, there's been a shop update with ALC. Go check out that uh, tomorrow, Friday, the whatever this was today, the 28th. So Friday, the 29th of March, 2024, Hypnotic Yarn is doing a store update. So... If you're, if you're subscribed to your, I think the spring collection is available first to those of us who are subscribed to Yarnable, but if you're subscribed, I may have shared in my Facebook group, part of the like teasers that they've been releasing with the spring update of spring collection stuff. That's some really pretty stuff. It's going to be really hard to not go buy it all. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. Yes, I am. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be a good carry. It's not that easy. No, it's not. On Saturday, day before Easter, we will have the unboxing of the Bellwether Club. I was hoping to have a piece of information, but unfortunately, I do not have but we're going to go ahead and roll with it because I really need to get this. Uh, I really want to, I don't need, I don't need to get it up, but I really wanted to get it up for Saturday's video. So I'm going to go ahead and film that today. If there's an addendum or update, I will include that in there. Stay tuned at the end of the video. I do have a housewares project or housewares uh, product <laughs> product. It's not a project. It's a product 
that I want to share with you guys that I found super duper useful. I have no idea how stupid I sound in the video. I haven't really listened to it. I recorded it, stuck it on my camera. We went from there. But it is a product I really love, so I did want to share. <sighs> Move things out of the way for the Bellwether Club. Um, we're going to start from, I think, uh, least baited, excuse me, well, least baited breath to most baited breath project. I only have two to share with you guys because I've got two FOs from the basket I shared with you guys last week. I only have two FOs to share with you guys because that's all I worked on really. I touched my Bellwether project for a couple of rows, but other than that, I really seriously worked on these two projects. One you should know by the thumbnail I just took previous to this. Previous to filming the video, I took a picture. So this is using Premier Cotton Collage Yarn. Yeah. F-O baby. Let's say 10 days to a sweater. Uh, yeah, I haven't blocked this or anything. I literally pulled this off the needles today, but so I do have a little bit left in my last two skeins of this. This was 300, 356 grams finished, I think, and I had 400 grams. So I did make alterations to this. This is the Yarn Twisters Sisterhood of the Traveling Shirt Pattern. I am going to make another one using probably the hot pink version of this that I have. This is Peyton's Venus and this is from like 2014. It hasn't been in my stash quite that long, but nearly. I haven't like four colors and I've used a bunch of the turquoise, but I still have a ton of the lavender, magenta, and light green. It was like a, you could only buy it in the 20 pack. So anyway, this is the yarn I used. I held it double for this project. Once again, this literally just came off my needles within the last hour. So please don't judge too harshly as far as like, it's not laying right because it's not but we have our sleeves. I did add a knit three pearl to rib. So when I do block this, that's uh, where I did the stretchier bind off there. That's why we have some little loopy doops there. But when I block this, I wanted the sleeves in the bottom to lay flat. So I did also add a little bit of a rib to the bottom of this. But otherwise, I followed the pattern except for the two fingering weights held double. And I'll pop in the picture. I, I tried it on this morning just to make sure that I liked the length after I finished it off. So I'll pop it in the picture before I did the sleeves. The sleeves, I did add one extra row from the written pattern, but that was only because I was doing a rib. So I wanted to make sure I had just a little bit of space there. But now it's weaving on the ends. I will soak it lay it flat to dry. I'm not going to like, like really block this. I'm just going to lay it flat to dry in shape. Um, I like the way the neckline curls under here. So, or curls over. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, we were talking about the bust size. So the arm fits my arm with a little bit of ease, not a ton, but a little bit of ease. So the armhole is fine, but when it comes to the bust on this, depending on how you want it to drape, it's, it's pretty wide. I mean, you can get, like I said, my preferred fit is between 44 and 45 inches across the bust measurement. While they say 48 inch bust is the largest they have it tried on, uh, I definitely think you could probably eke out a 50 inch bust depending on the yarn you're using. Now the yarn I use does have a little bit of stretch to it. So it's cotton, superwash wool, polyamide, and PBT. And there is, like I showed you guys last week, 
a decent amount of stretch in my yarn. So some of that extra stretch could be coming from the yarn, but there is a lot of stretch in this. It's not cropped on, trust me. <laughs> but I do love how this turned out. I do love how the fabric looks. I would definitely do this two held together again for another project. It was very easy to work with this yarn, but I love that flecky double marley effect when you're up close and then you have sort of kind of not quite stripes at a distance. And the texture definitely hid the way the increase is done for the yolk here. So I kind of like it. I am still debating on whether or not I do decide to add a couple of rows of ribbing to the neckline, uh, just maybe to pull it in a skosh because, I mean, I could go full off shoulder with it or just kind of let it hang on my shoulder. So my goal of cami top underneath this won't work just because it's got a wider neckline than the shirt I'm wearing. And this is made to kind of go off shoulder a little bit. So anywho, my sisterhood of the traveling shirt is complete and I will be starting another one. Now the yarn, just go ahead and pull the magenta color here. So this is uh, orchid and I would, and this is one of the reasons why I'm doing it is it was written as a slubby yarn pattern as well. This one is 50%, 55% cotton, 40% acrylic, 5% nylon. And there is no stretch in this yarn. This is a very, very, um, it's not stiff to work with it, but it's uh, got zero give to the yarn itself. So I showed you guys last week how the two black and white pictures look. This is using straight fingering weight yarn. This is using the slubby yarn they recommended. My slubby yarn is probably just a skosh thicker than their slubby yarn. Uh, mine's listed as a four weight, but definitely not a four weight. I mean, we're in that same fingering weight for the non-slubby bits, but I did want to give it a shot because I thought that'd be super cute. And we'll definitely have less stretch to this one. So we'll see how that alters the overall. But I'm super excited. Technically, this is my sweater done for the year. And I have another one started. And I have the one I still need to put sleeves on from last year. So I might have three sweaters done. If for some reason I don't make this one. Y'all can't see the happy dance under here, but just trust me. Uh, next, next, next. My last project. My only other thing. The darling of the month. To just tease you guys a little bit more. I'm talking about the summer freshness shawl I've been sharing with you guys. Can I just say I would make 900 of these. Now, having done the complete thing. I would make 900 of these. So I did variant A for mine. When I did this before using the Dulce Cashmere from Hobie, I just did the straight pattern. For this, I did do variant A, but there is a variant AB as well. And I didn't quite have enough yarn for that, I didn't think. Come to find out, I probably did because I had 25 grams left over, but This is what I have left. I did add the cherries and uh, berries and snow, not cherries and snow, berries and snow from ALC to this. So we have Pollen Party and Here We Grow Again from Yarnable. We have Cotton Candy with Sprinkles, Humor Me, H-U-E, Humor Me, and Berries and Snow from ALC. So I had 25 or 20 grams left of these two. I have 75 left of this one. It seems like I had almost 60 left in this one and 57 left in this one. So 
I still have a lot of urine left over. These two are actually going to go straight into my 20 gram minis leftover container that I set up last year. This one will actually probably go in the same one where I have my mostly full or I can just set these back in the urine blend ALC baskets, which make it a lot easier because those sit right here by my desk. Well, they sit in my desk chair because I don't use my desk chair to film. Any here. So this is the Summer Freshness Shawl by Mignon Crochet. Delightful designer. She's been waiting with bated breath for the finished project. I will finally post pictures on Instagram either tonight or tomorrow of the finished shawl. You guys, I've even blocked this. Like I soaked it and blocked it. It's 99.7% dry, so I went ahead and pulled it off the blocking mats. This blocked so wide, by the way. And see, I, I just love when my plan comes together. So if you went from this yarn to the berries and snow that is this final lace repeat down here, you'd be like, eh, eh. But I wanted this to read from light to dark, and I really liked how Pollen Party, in my mind, was going to read as a white at the top, but not white, white. And it perfectly worked. So then we go to Here We Grow Again, and those are the two yarnable yarns. Then we have the Cotton Candy with Sprinkles, Humor Me, and then Berries in Snow. And that gray just adds just that little bit of shadow at the bottom here. There's a little bit of a slightly darker purple or darker shift. And then we have that gray. I am so happy! I could not be happier with how this turned out. My plan for the colors work. So this is part one, part two, part three, part four, part five of the written pattern. It was originally done as a MCAL, I believe. If not, it was still done as a crochet along. So, but I think it was a mystery crochet along as it was released in sections. Hers is written using the sheepy, sheep cheese whorl yarn I believe so any of those types of cakes would work beautifully for it if you just wanted a gradient effect I've done it in the Dulce Cashmere from Hobie which was absolutely beautiful but I'm not sure if this will be my Easter shawl yet because right now it says it's going to be 82 degrees on Sunday which is great but if we go to the 8 a.m. mass it could still be like 40 degrees so we're still doing the, like, some days are, like, stupid cold in the morning. Some days not so much. But I want to, I've got to make a choice as to what I'm going to wear. But I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I have been sharing pictures as I went. Once I started adding that last color in, I did share pictures on Instagram. Partially because the cats have been loving me just sitting there working on stuff. I've been so, like, absorbed into my projects. Like, the cats can lay down on my lap and not have to be moved for a long time. But this is so pretty. And it's... Let me see, that's about four feet. Yeah, so uh, the way I blocked it, doing variant A... And I did not super firm block this. I actually very gently blocked this just enough to open the lace work and keep it open and make sure that my shells stayed shells while I was wearing it. So this is not super heavy blocked. So we're looking at almost eight feet across the top edge. And it's got a three and a half foot drop approximately from tip to top down the center, but I'm just, I'm in love. It 
it's getting hung on my shirt. The, the nap on my shirt, it's a cotton blend shirt. So it's like Velcroing the shawl as I try to twist it and make it drip. I'm in love. I'm in love. It turned out better than I thought it was going to turn out. And even doing variant A, like I said, the weave on this is so light. It would not be entirely too much to wear it as a scarf. Hook the tails. <laughs> so it wouldn't be entirely too much. You still see all five colors just peeking through from the neck out. But it's so incredibly light. So these are all 100% superwash, or not superwash. Are they superwash? Yeah, they're superwash. Yeah, superwash wool, superwash merino wool. I would blame it on something weird, but it's just my brains. Um, so in wool, these are incredibly loose, open, easy to manipulate stitches. I'm in love with the yarns I use. I'm in love with the way I use them. And I'm in love with this pattern. So this is now the second one of these patterns I've done. Y'all know me. I don't do a whole lot of patterns more than once. Maybe twice. I would definitely do this pattern again. If I were trying to test like a cake of yarn or was sent a cake of yarn to like share a test with this. Or that would match this. I would totally, totally use it. Uh, the one thing I did specifically different, and I did have a reason for doing this. The last row of each part, the, the exchange here, you do double crochets and then either back loop or front loop double crochets to create these ridges in between the color changes. So the last row of the previous section I did do with the new color. So the post stitch is actually done with the new color. And it's because I wanted the ridge to be very pronounced in the old color. And it also started blending. See where it's down here a little bit more noticeable maybe. The new color in where those stitches would peek around what looks like a chain up here. So if you wanted to get the same effect, if you had noticed that in the pictures maybe, yeah, here you can really tell where that just makes the edge pop from the previous row. So I did do that post stitch in the new color. So if you were using multiple balls of yarn, I would highly recommend doing that if you are confident in your colors or you want to just to create a subtle blend between the colors where that's going to pop just a little bit more on that stitch. But I'm so happy. This was such an investment of time and stash that I love that I am so, so glad that it turned out how I wanted it to and how I expected it to. Um, you know, it's always kind of a little, especially when you're investing five skeins of <laughs> highly prized and well-loved yarn into something. So to have it work out perfectly Anyway, I'm going to let you guys run. I'm going to talk to you guys on Saturday, which I'm going to go ahead and film now while I'm up here and have time and some voice left. And I hope you guys, if you don't stop by for Saturday's video, I hope you have a wonderful Easter. I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Bye, you guys. Might Might need to...
Okay, guys. I really need to get that luxury room repainted. I have a product to share with you guys. I'm slipping this in here this way. I want to share Happy Crafty Homemaker, but this isn't like one of those like the world's going to collapse if you don't. My recent obsession for lunch has been a wheat-free tortilla with shredded lettuce or shreddice, cucumber, turkey, and avocado. Smashed avocado with lemon juice or lime juice, whatever's on hand, and just salt and pepper in it. I'm going through so much avocado, I've been pre-smashing my avocado. If you go through a lot of avocados, avocados, this thing is awesome. So this is six avocados minus what's in my wrap. I'm in the middle of making lunch. It's 11 o'clock. I'm doing a lot of cooking right now. I've got dinner prepped. I just cooked off a whole bunch of bacon. But I really wanted to share my guacamole avocado holder thing, store thing. So it vents the, this is going to be kind of gross. So like, you put your avocado in there and you smash it down. This has little vent holes in it. I don't know that you can really see that. So it squishes the air out as the ring here is sealing the inside of the jar. <clears throat> I've seen like 900 of these. I know other people like these things. If you don't go through a ton of avocado at any one time or guacamole or anything that oxidizes real bad and gets yucky looking and watery, not a big deal. However, this is now my fourth batch that I've now used this three times for like three consecutive making a ton of smashed avocado. Um, it seems to, I mean, I haven't had it go past nine days in the fridge just because I've eaten what I have made, but it does last nine days in the fridge. So. I will leave a link in the description box down below. It is an Amazon affiliate link. There's no pressure to buy it or anything, but if you go through a lot of avocados and we are in avocado season, everybody's got... It's flying around. I did want to share because it's good. It's a product that actually works. And I neglect the homemaker part of this because... I generally assume most people don't care. Um, my, my homemaker videos don't do very well, but definitely, definitely a product I highly recommend.